welcome to GDB World. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can make this procedural rope material and substance designer. If you enjoyed today's video and wish to support the channel, please like and subscribe. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. To start us out, just make a 4K metallic roughness graph and then just create a frame for our fiber base one. This is just made up of a gradient linear one, then you put it into a gradient map. And what we're just wanting to do here is just have some two black values uh, with a white value in the middle to create a nice smooth transition. Tile on it for tile generator and we're just going to increase that X amount to about 45. And then we're going to use a series of blur nodes with non-uniform blur to sort of soften out those edges. Then we're going to use a waveform one to create the sort of silhouette for our weave. So we want to make sure this is a solid single weave just with a size min and max around about 50% and then we're going to blend that in with a pabloid to create our height values. Using that as a multiply and then we're going to move into uh, HQ blur. You can use a regular blur as well but this is just going to blur out those edges a little bit further for us so it's not as harsh. And we're using the levels just to give further control and we warp that with our weave. And what you start to notice is it sort of pushes the line so that they're not uniform and straight. We want to start blending it together using non-uniform blur in the opacity. Blend it by itself and put it on a multiplier just with a very low, low value. Then you can go and duplicate that three times. So that's going to be three different variations for three different weaves. You can do more if you wish, uh, but we're just going to do three and then adjust our directional warp um, angle to give us that different variation. Next up, we use our tile generator, um, and this is going to sort of make up and actually make it actually look like rope. So using a uh, series of intersects along with changing that blend mode to blend max that will start giving you something that merges together nicely um, just change the scale a little bit change the rotation and then you'll start to see very quickly you know we've got that sort of rope look that we're looking for now we're just going to use a bit of a directional warp again so uh, parallel noise just to make it a little bit more organic so it's a little bit looser. Be careful with this, as if you go a little bit too high, it makes it look like it doesn't have much tension. Using a slope blur and some clouds to just do some finer detailing for the rope itself. Um, just looking to sort of make it a little bit more fuzzy, I guess, is the sort of aim. And then we're gonna use the Transform 2D and merge that with another Transform 2D just to create a sort of tileable shape there. Using a safe transform for tiling itself overall. Um, and then finally we're going to do some more finer blending, this time with a fractal some blur. Uh, again, just to make it a little bit more fuzzy. We're just create a normal map and this is gonna be our braid string. So this is like when the rope gets a little bit uh, broken in parts. I'm just coming back and just adjusting some of the values here first beforehand. Uh, it seems a little bit too strong for my liking. And then we can come back to this uh, pattern here. So we're going to be using Scratch Generator along with um, a Pabloid. So the scratches just decrease the number of splines to like 18. Increase the max segment per spline to 256. And then just adjust some of the scale and uh, whip values. Uh, there's not really a science to this one, just sort of play around with it until you get something that looks about right. Um, but just keep it not as noisy, and then use the directional warp with your pabloid just to distort it a little bit. Uh, now we're going to look at tiling it, so using the tile sampler. So this is where it gets probably a lot more noisy, so we want quite high values in this part. Got mine tiling at 200 strands, and this is where we can use our normal map and our vector displacement as well as the rotation and displacement map um, nodes as well. So just max those out for the most part. And we should have something that's good to blend in with our main shape. 
So just making a copy of that is a non-uniform blur. Um, this is just for blending purposes so that it doesn't destroy the height values too much. And then we're going to get our actual blend node to overlay the strands on top of that one. So I'm just sort of setting up the, the ambient occlusion map as well while I'm here. And we'll come back to overlaying the strands in a moment. And here's that blend node now. So we're just going to leave it actually at a copy. And we're just going to reduce that opacity down to about 15%. can come back and adjust this as you please as well um, but now we're going to sort of play around with the ambient occlusion um, so what I'm doing with this is we're just going to use a series of a AOs so one without the strands and then there's going to be one with the strands as well and we're going to try and blend those together just to give us a little bit more control with how the AO comes out at the end Using the histogram select to darken the far corners of each, I guess, rope iteration. Using a blur to loosen off the values a little bit and then you just invert it so then we get back to the original desired shape there. And then we can multiply that in with our two AO nodes that we had before. And we're going to use that as the ambient occlusion, but just make sure you put a levels node in between because um, you're going to sort of play around with that a little bit as we move into the color stages for the rope. With that done, we can move on to the diffuse. So it just starts out as a gradient map, um, and then you're just going to drag a gradient onto an image, delete a whole heap of the values and then put that into our color node there just for I guess previewing purposes and then we're going to get another gradient map and a blend node and we're going to merge that with our ambient occlusion and it's just going to be an overlay and we're going to put it at about 40 percent so we're going to sort of rinse and repeat this a few times but um, coming back to our histogram scan again so we're using that same technique we used for the AO um, and then put that as our opacity so that it's sort of masking out the details a little bit. And then we're going to run it over another image and blend that over the top. This time we'll leave it as a copy. And then we're going to use a black and white spots. So this is to give us a bit more variation. The technique I'm using to color is basically I'm doing everything with the black and white values first, so just with a series of noises. And I'm going to come back in with HSL and temperature nodes to sort of reverse the effects that doing it this way sort of has on the material, um, just to bring back some of that color again. Then we're going to use a flood fill to apply our noise, and then again a series of HSL nodes just to adjust those values a little bit further. Finally, I'm just wanting a little bit more control to make the details pop a little bit more. So I'm just going to blend in the AO again, just as a multiply, just bringing it down to about 55%, and then using HSL to adjust the lightness of the material as well. It's just a matter of increasing our heights just so that we can preview how it's looking. And then it's just a matter of adjusting the tile generator scale of each weave um, so that we can sort of see how prominent each line is. Um, I've sort of brought mine back a little bit, making it a little bit more subtle because um, it sort of comes out quite noisy otherwise. Um, but you can sort of, sort of play around with it to uh, whatever your brief is. And for that, that brings today's video to a close. If you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe. And as always, I hope you have a lovely day.